Subleka, I think uh, as per Mahonda's uh, ideas or instructions, we will start now. It is 8 o'clock. Okay, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, myself, Dr. Rupleka Go, second year postgraduate trainee from Ramakrishna Mission Shiva Pratishtan, going to present and case on malignant testicular mass. Uh, my patient, Mr. XYZ, 33-year Hindu gentleman, resident of Kali, Kalighat, Kolkata, engineer by profession, uh, came with chief complaints of swelling at right side of the scrotum for past six months. History of present illness, patient was apparently well six months back when he noticed asymmetry between both sides of the scrotum with swelling at right side. Swelling on east was insidious in onset and gradually increasing in size from an initial size to about 4 into 3 centimeter for the first four months. But for the last two months, the swelling has rapidly increased in size to attain a current size of 18 to 7 centimeter. Patient also complains of sensation of heaviness on the right scrotum. There was no change, in size, no change in size of the swelling in relation to the change in the posture or daily activities. No history of trauma to the scrotum. No history of pain over the swelling. No history of fever or burning micturition. No history of similar swelling on the opposite scrotum or groin region. No history of any swelling in the abdomen or neck. No history of swelling in the lower limb. No history suggestive of metastatic spread. That is no history of calf, hemoptysis, breathlessness, no history of loss of weight or loss of appetite, no history of abdominal distension, jaundice, no history of back pain, pain in extremities, no history of vomiting, weakness of limb, or any symptoms of cranial nerve palsy. Next slide, please. Past history, no history of major medical ailment in the past, any previous hospitalization, hospitalization and surgeries, no history of similar scrotal complaints in the past, no history of comorbidities, and no history of undescendant testes in childhood. Personal history, patient was married with two children, one son and one daughter, normal appetite, taking mixed diet, no history of addiction, normal sleep pattern, and bowel and bladder habit was also normal. Come to the family history, both parents are alive and in good health condition. Sibling, one brother, 28 year old and in good health condition. No history of cancer related deaths or any contagious disease run in the family. Okay. Uh, Lekha, yes. What we will do is before you go into examination, let us uh, review the history and any other points that we may need to talk about here. Now, yes, uh, we, we, we got the gist, 33 year old uh, gentleman presented with six months history of swelling on the, in the scrotum, gradually increasing, rapidly increasing over the last two months or so, sensation of heaviness and no, no other symptom as far as uh, uh, metastatic uh, history is concerned or yes. history of uh, trauma or inguinal surgeries and things like that. My question is, no, besides the thing that you have mentioned, what other symptoms may be possible in a case of testicular uh, lump, in a patient with testicular lump? See, uh, sir, maybe, maybe there uh, is a history me, of... Let me just, let me just uh, interrupt for a minute. The, uh, it is nice that as soon as we see a testicular lump in a, in a male aged between 25 and 40, you think about malignancy and you go likewise. But it is more important to think about lateral possibilities. So what yes. lateral possibilities basically we need to look at? So that your... Sir, it can be... Hmm. Yes, carry on. It can be hydrocyl. Uh, it can be uh, old hematocyl. Uh, it can be, sir, epididymoarchitis. Good. Or it so can it be... Epididymoarchitis. It could yes, be, uh, can it be syphilis? There is a thing called syphilitis. Yes, drama. sir. Can it be syphilis? Uh, but uh, there will be loss of the sensation where it's present, but we cannot do the test for loss of sensation. No. Uh, syphilistic gamma, does it appear in a 33-year-old? This is another question that you have to look at. Syphilitic yes, gamma yes. is tertiary syphilis. So it is quite late presentation. 
so okay, so <laughs> but this is not this is not a uh, not a question so these are the possibilities so epididymo orchitis syphilitic gamma these are possibility tuberculosis is also another possibility yes, so your history does not look at uh, infective uh, areas uh, you see your history does not mention about about fever about uh, sir i have mentioned that there is no history of fever or burning sensation in menstruation yeah. oh that is good that is good so basically these are the areas another peculiar uh, symptom that patients may have is gynecomastia yes yeah. sir there are some tumor also that presented uh, estrogen secreting so gynecomastia can be present along non seminomatous testicular masses may present yes, with gynecomastia so this yes, is sir. also also a very important important question important question now you said about family history is he a married person yes sir children two children sir two children so that is good because you see patients with uh, who have got problems uh, regarding identification of their uh, phenotypical or gene genetic sex are more likely to develop uh, problems with testicular yes, sir, with thin filter syndromes yes like so this is also very important so Uh, tell me regarding testicular malignancies what are the uh, four important uh, predisposing factors and then we will move on to your examination uh, sir uh, the four important are cryptorchidism undescended testes at childhood uh, family history if it is uh, occurring siblings or in uh, uh, in my father first degree relative tell me a person a person's father has got testicular cancer a person's yes, brother sir. has got testicular cancer uh, who is likely uh, what i mean what i am trying to tell you is yes sir in brother sir 8 to 8 to 12 times higher risk uh, exactly. and the exactly. in brother it is 4 to 6 times so basically same same uh, uh, genetic line siblings are more likely to develop testicular masses very good so family history uh, history of uh, cryptorchidism at and previous uh, surgery regarding uh, undescended testes yes sir and then a personal history of testicular malignancy once one malignancy. who has got a testicular malignancy may develop another testicular malignancy another test yes sir then sir some uh, genetic predisposing factors like lymphoid syndrome pj syndrome good good it, it can okay. also occur i i think we have covered uh, the the history part uh, reasonably extensively uh, these cases testicular masses unless they have got abdominal masses as well are unlikely to be given as uh, long cases if they also yes. have abdominal masses then obviously it can be an a long case otherwise it will be a short case so your history should yes. be very precise next examination so come to the general examination patient was uh, examined after taking informed consent in a well lit room with proper exposure uh, patient was examined in both supine and standing position patient was alert conscious and cooperative karnofsky performance status 90 build average face is normal gait normal decubitus of choice and bmi 22 kg per meter square no anemia jaundice cyanosis clubbing or edema present no neck vein engorgement seen No cervical limb node palpable. Pulse seventy eight per minute regular normal. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Normal... Sorry, sorry. I was listening. I gone through the whole list. I have one or two questions. Carry on. Carry on. Yes, sir, I, what we will do is let us. Yes, yes. Just started general examination. So history part. If you want to ask anything, might as yes, well do it now. Uh, you have covered the most part. That is, uh, you should also have uh, some points regarding the inflammatory swellings. that then the question and then second was uh, hormone secreting tumors yes. and third is you come made a comment in past history that i am trying to repeatedly emphasize no history of similar in this uh, similar scrotal <laughs> swelling try to understand patient these are this line is applicable for diseases where the disease characterized by relapse and remission a, a testicular cancer on right side may not come and then go spontaneously Okay, so this line is not required in all the cases. These you can use in a patient okay. who has got a Burgess disease. These you can use in a patient who has got uh, Graves disease because Graves disease can go to spontaneous remission. So this line is applicable for situations where 
that this is characterized by relapse and remission. A malignancy on the right side will not go off unless the patient is treated. Okay, so this. Yes, <laughs> uh, I think you can pass on to the examination. Yeah. You have discussed the uh, whole part of uh, examination uh, history. Yeah, please carry on. Uh, so, no neck pain engagement seat, no cervical limb node palpable, pulse 78 per minute regular, normal rhythm, adequate volume, blood pressure 120 by 70 millimeter of Hg, adequate volume, respiration 12 per minute regular, temperature normal, no pigmentation seen, no obvious deformity seen. Uh, so, come to the local examination, inguinoscrotal region examination on inspections. Of right sided inguinoscrotal region, there is swelling in right hemiscrotum. Midline of the scrotum with penis is devi deviated to left. The swelling is about 18 to 7 centimeter in dimensions. Loss of rugae in scrotal skin noted. All margins are seen are well defined and rounded. The swelling can be extending up to the root of the scrotum. And left sided of inguinoscrotal region is normal. No swelling is noted in the groin. No calf pimples seen over the inguinal region. On palpation, right sided of the scrotum, local temperature is normal, no tenderness noted. It was possible to get above the swelling, suggesting that it is a scrotal swelling only. Shape, uh, shape globular, swelling was hard in consistency, freely mobile within the scrotal pouch and not fixed to the scrotal skin. Spermatic cord can be felt at the root of the scrotum, no thickening of the spermatic cord felt, no inguinal limb nodes palpable. Left side of the scrotum normal. Hernia orifice is normal. Genitalia, external genitalia, normal. And co come to the systemic examination part. On gastrointestinal examination, abdomen soft, non-tender, not distended, no organomegaly seen, no free fluid noted, no limb node palpable. On neck, no limb nodes palpable. On respiratory system, normal vesicular breath sound noted. On uh, cardiovascular system, uh, S1, S2 heart, no marmas noted. On CNS, no focal neurological deficit noted. And in spine examination, no spinal tenderness present. Uh, come to the summary part. Uh, my patient, 33 years Hindu gentleman, presented with painless progressive swelling in the right hemiscrotum for the last six months. The swelling was insidious in onset and gradually progressive over the first four months and then rapidly increased over the last two months to attain the present size. Patient also complains of heaviness in the right scrotum. There is no alternation, alteration in the size with postural changes, no history of pain, fever, or any other groin swelling, or any swelling in the abdomen or neck. There is no symptom suggestive of metastatic, uh, distant metastasis. On examination, swelling was found in relation to the right testis, globular in shape, 18 to 7 centimeter in size, hard in consistency, freely mobile in scrotal pouch, and not fixed to the scrotal skin. Swelling was uh, scrotal as it was possible to get above the swelling. Right spermatic cord was normal. Left testis and spermatic cord were normal. No limb node were palpable. Now come to the my provisional diagnosis. A 33 years old gentleman having rapidly progressive mass in the right hemiscrotum. Most probably malignant testicular tumor without any clinical evidence of metastatic disease. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, a general examination, I don't think we have anything much to add regarding local examination. You have uh, proven that this is a scrotal swelling by getting above the swelling. And then you mentioned this is a hard swelling and uh, there was uh, no hydrocell. See, the question is whether the patient also has a hydrocell. So, uh, any ideas about hydrocell and testicular masses? coexisting or things like that? So it can occur, sir, if there is a, some in, inflammatory reactions, uh, hydrocyl can coexist. Not inflammatory. Tickle mass can cause hydrocyl. But what is what that the, what what is is hydrocyl the, called as? What is that hydrocyl called? So that is, is the that classic, classic example. Is example classic of a secondary, secondary hydrocyl. hydrocyl. Secondary. How will you differentiate a primary hydrocin and a secondary hydrocin? So in secondary hydrocin, there are 
associated mass or associated with uh, secondary to a primary disease so Absolutely. there will be presence of primary disease yeah. but secondary hydrocele is lax where a primary hydrocele is usually tense to get a yes. long history in a primary hydrocele you get a short history in a secondary hydrocele secondary hydrocele so uh, this is important. So you did not mention anything about hydrocele. So whether you did any, so that is very important. The other thing to note uh, would be, uh, please see the next slide. Uh, yes, uh, hemiscrotum, uh, penis is deviated. Uh, you have seen the rest. You have felt the cord. You have felt the cord. Right. Okay. Now, can you tell me something? I mean, you have uh, felt a testicular mass. Uh, you think this may be malignant because of the rapid increase in size. There may yes. be loss of testicular sensation, things like that. So my question is, uh, how will you when I put the T stage on this tumor? Clinically, uh, can you stage a testicular tumor regarding that T stage? Uh, sir, as it is uh, not fixed to the scrotal skin, so T4 is omitted. And it uh, as the spermatic cord can be felt. Uh, so, the, and it is not thickened. Uh, I think there is no involvement of the spermatic cord also. So, this we, we will not go so into can... the spermatic cord. Uh, we will, the, the, the general consensus is, is clinically you will be able to get a T4. And uh, besides that, uh, you will not be able to uh, clinically judge a testicular tumor's T stage. So, T stage is done. Of, it is always a pathological Pathological, pathological yes. Pathological T staging. Now, regarding uh, the lymph nodes, you say no lymph nodes are palpable. So, in a testicular mass, what lymph nodes are you looking for? Sir, uh, I am looking for inguinal lymph nodes. No, uh, you are not. Group of lymph nodes and... No, you are no. not. No, you are not. What is the landing zone? See, this is the correct technical term for a testicular mass. What is the landing zone for a right testicular mass? What is the landing zone of a left <laughs> testicular mass? You tell us. Sir, for uh, right testicular mass, it is a uh, aortocaval ah, lymph nodes. Right. Where is that? Yes. At what level? Para aortic <laughs> lymph nodes for left and right for aortocaval. Where? 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 Aortic at what long, level? From epigastrium to the pelvis. Where is a... At the a level of umbilicus. What is that level? This follows what? Which vessel? Uh, sir, ilia... No, no, no. no. This, this follows, follows the terminal vessels of the which is at the level of L1. Superficial vessels. Each no. it is at the level of yes. L1, L2. Umbilicus. No, yes. no. Below that, the umbilicus. that's okay. L1, L2 is the correct the way to answer this question. You see, because the answer to this they question come with lies the mass in the epigastrium. They come with the mass in the epigastrium, not yes. below the umbilicus. Okay. Yes. Yes. And and with a you talk about the landing zone of testicular uh, tumors in regard to the termination of the testicular gonadal vein on the right side and the left side they are different so you as you said correctly it is aortocaval on the right side and it is paraortic on the left side okay so how does the testicular vein end on the right side and on the left side? Uh, sir on the right side it is uh, directly drained into the IVC and the yeah. on the left side it is uh, the drain into the renal vein and then going to the IVC. Left renal vein and going into the IVC. Yes, that, uh, is, that, that is correct. So if you got a mass in the paraortic area in the midline, so that is accepted. Now you also looked at the inguinal region and you found a linguinal inguinal mass or you found an iliac mass. So how how does it uh, clinically? What does it uh, talk about? What are you de dealing with? You got a testicular mass yes. and you get an ileo inguinal lymph node or iliac. In lymph which node. in which situation the spread can go to the inguinal or iliac nodes? Uh, sir, when the scrotal skin is involved, from then uh, involved there or, is a... or or interfered. There are a lot of situations yeah, that yes. people have gone through the scrotal skin to drain a hydrocele and then. Yes. You open up a new channel for the lipidic drainage. Okay. Uh, this is what is called scrotal violation. Scrotal violation. Yes, right. You know there is a testicular mass and still you have violated the scrotum. Or the patient had yes. a past surgery for test testicular, you know, the undescended testis and all that. So that may give rise to nodes like that. But a presence of an iliac node is uh, will be considered as metastatic. Yes, you know, can be retroperitoneal. No, no, no. That is not retroperitoneal. 
So you have no, come no, into, sure. given us another term. So and let us look at what do you mean by retrofusion? I mean, regard to testicular muscle. I'm a monoha, the J. J. Kotagolo Bola Dorkan, Nishigulo Nabola Ival. To me, a bipo dacho, Kono Kono Projon Ni. Come on. Amra, we will talk about it when the time comes. So basically, it will yes. be considered an, an inguinal uh, node or a, a pelvic node. In absence of previous surgery and things like that, where you can account for it, should be considered as metastatic. You have to, yes, it is sir. M1, M1A. You understand? It is M1. Yes. Sir. Okay. So now you have got testicular mass, you have uh, checked uh, local area, you have checked. Now uh, it is possibly time to talk about uh, the management plan. Mahunda, any questions you want yes, to ask? Another question is you have rightly omitted. Uh, there is loss of testicular sensation. For other yes. candidates yes. in the exam, don't say there is loss of testicular sensation. Rather, you can say that I have not elicited this sign of testicular sensation loss yes. because this patient has other features of malignancy. It is not wise to press the testis to elicit the sign. Okay. Why, why, why should that. you not press the testis? Sir, uh, first it can cause uh, the aching pain or it can uh, disseminate the tu tumor. Ah. Ah. Embolism can occur uh, exactly. of the tumor. Exactly. So you will not handle. You have not mentioned. I agree. You are you are uh, quite okay. You have not mentioned. You are right. Students will say in the exam that I have pressed the testes and try to elicit, elicit that there is loss of sensation. It is not recorded in the examination. So shall we go after the, the next slide, please? Let yeah. us uh, look at. Yes, I think he she is okay here. Yeah. yeah. Next. Please next. Please next. Go. Next. Yeah. Next. Okay. So in the in the diagnosis, you say they say uh, malignant testicular tumor. Uh, in this age yes. group, uh, what is a more likely common tumor that comes up and you can say, yes, it's likely to be a, a seminoma or teratoma? It's likely to be a seminoma, sir. Yeah, because why, beyond 30 why years... Why you think this is a seminoma? You tell me. Uh, why so you think it's a seminoma? Are peculiar so, so basically, sir, seminoma, seminoma is, is the most tumor. common and... Uh, yeah. It occurs in the fourth, yeah. third to fourth because it's yeah. exactly because seminoma outweighs all other malignancies, isn't it? Actually, I, I agree. These yeah. are histological diagnoses, but uh, depending I, on the age, depending on the, you say they say very homogeneous, uh, smooth surface tumor. Some cell tumor so, of testis is fine, and then uh, in that seminoma is the highest. So I think germ cell tumor would be a reasonable diagnosis to make. Now, yeah. okay. So we have now reached the end of your clinical part. Now is all examination, all discussion part. So you tell us how are you going to manage this patient? What are you going to do now that you have got this patient with you? What are you going to do now? Uh, sir, at first uh, I am uh, doing the confirm uh, test to confirm the disease. So I will uh, do the ultrasonography of the abdomen and the testis, uh, inguinoscrotal region. Uh, to confirm the disease and then after confirmation I will have to do the investigation for staging the disease and Can you uh, after you have to do several things finish up Kintamani's line invasion to confirm the diagnosis invasion yes, to stage the disease and investigation to assess so, patient uh, fitness PSC for fitness. anesthesia and surgery so that yeah. is what you should keep up in the first go don't, don't stop by ultrasound you have got 100 things to do carry on <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, after uh, ultrasound uh, of the upper abdomen scrotum, I will so do the serum marker. The investigation of choice for a testicular mass. That is absolutely yes. correct. Yes. Would you do an FNAC? Uh, this no, seems sir. to be our question in our, you know, when we were doing postgraduates, this was a common question. So that no, sir, constitutes a scrotal FNAC. violation. This is the technical yes, term that constitutes a scrotal violation and scrotal it opens violation. the pathways for. Metastasis in this lymphatic uh, spreads and the so track that, for the that is, that is not warranted. So you will do an ultrasound scan and then you will plan for other investigations. Uh, other so investigations, sir. That? I will do the serum markers. Yes. What marker? Uh, sir, I will do the alpha beta protein, beta ICG, and the LDH. So as soon as you say talk about the tumor markers, there are several questions will be asked. One is uh, regarding uh, your the simplest would be LDH. What is the role of doing LDH? It is secreted from testicular masses or what? Sir, uh, LDH is a non-specific uh, tumor marker. Uh -huh. It can be suggestive of the uh, that no, can rest. Very high LDH suggests a high tumor burden. Nothing else. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. A high, very high LDH suggests a high tumor burden. So, what about alpha fetoprotein? Uh, sir, alpha fetoprotein uh, is uh, purely increased in the non seminomatous uh, germ cells tumors. Uh, so, we can exclude the seminomas. Uh, semino in seminomas, there is never raised the alpha fetoprotein. And uh, it is also that is suggestive of malignant tumor. High grade, uh, high levels of alpha fetoprotein suggestive of high, high grade tumors. And along with that, that uh, sir, increased level of serum markers <coughs> also helpful in the post uh, treatment. Uh, serum markers these guided are, the post treatment. These are also for staging. So you have staging. Uh, okay. So in a testicular yes, tumor, uh, you know, staging, we consider what are the things that we consider in HSCC eight, you know, classification. What what are the things that we consider? Uh, Sir, uh, at first we have to do the uh, size for a uh, pathological T staging and then for nodal status N and for metastatic M and for serum marker S. So you have got, uh, so that is uh, so very important. So quantitative analysis. So just presence is not good enough. So your answer should be quantitative analysis of alpha fetoprotein and you have to do beta yes. ICG and you have to do LDH, yes. quantitative analysis. LDH. Yeah. Yes. So, so you will do quantitative analysis. Now, a patient who has got histopathology of seminoma, but also has got alpha fetoprotein raised. So, which pathway does yeah. he go regarding management? Uh, sir, it can Pure be seminoma mixed cell on histopathology. These are what? These are mixed germ cell tumors. Mixed cell, mixed germ cell tumors, sir. So, they will be considered as non-seminomatous germ cell tumors. Non-seminomatous tumor, tumor are we considered chemotherapy or retroperitone? No, no, no. Okay, that don't, depends don't on jump the gun. Don't, don't jump the gun. So, okay. basically... If you have got histopathology of pure seminoma with alpha fetoprotein raised, it simply puts the patient in non seminomatous germ cell tumor group. Yes. Management goes likewise. Okay. Now, you may yes. have a patient in whom there is no testicular mass or so far as you can see, there is nothing, but all the markers are raised. Yes. What staging is it called? So, it is 1S. 1S. Very good. Very good. 1S. So we will talk about pathway management in a minute. So you have done testicular tumor markers. You have done uh, ultrasound scan and you have done a chest x-ray and you have done TT of the abdomen and pelvis. Abdomen pelvis. Yes. TT of the abdomen pelvis, chest x-ray. In suggested oh. cases, you may do a chest CT. You will do tumor markers and obviously yes. you have to now proceed to something. So, what will you do? When, when you, uh, Sineka, when you say, make notes, na, you should specifically also say virkose note. Because in testicular malignancy, it's primarily the virkose gland is uh, enlarged. So, you already time say, all the time you are saying cervical limb nodes, but specifically you should yes, also sir. mention that virkose node is not enlarged. Yes. Where is the virkose node? Ah. <laughs> so the supraclavicular group no, of no, 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 no. You talk about level. Where? Supraclavicular is a, a large area. Why do you exactly find the virgose node? The node is lying in between the two heads of sternocleidomastoid. The two heads of the sternocleidomastoid. Yes. Scalenic oh, group of... Labicular head, yeah. So, so how will you put it the level as? Level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Five? 5, sir. No, it's level 4. Ah, <laughs> see, these are yes, lateral the classic questions. These are the classic yes, questions. Sorry, sorry. You see, lateral nodes will be... Uh, Supracavicular nodes may be many types. Lateral to the is posterior tangle. Yes, the virgos yes. node is TPT. It is medial, so it is a four. level four limbs. Okay, so now yes. you have. It is time to talk about the second part of your if your presentation, the the high inguinal orchidectomy. So yes, it is time to do a pathological staging. So how will you proceed? You said you will not do FNA. Fine, agreed. Yes, sir. Is there a role for uh, frozen biopsy? Yes, sir. When? I can do. Uh, when? Sir, when in a... You can do cases, many, in, all, in all cases, you will not do. In no, all sir. cases, in you will not do. Cases. When you will consider this? In suspicious cases where... Uh, there in a is patient a like this... In a patient, in a patient like this, classic history of rapid increase, heart swelling, marker being increased, will you do a frozen biopsy? No, sir. No. Only in diagnostic dilemma, yes. you are thinking that it might be tuberculosis or it might be some inflammatory lesions. 
in that case what is the maneuver done uh chevi sir correct correct more or less chevi sir maneuver chevi sus maneuver chevi sus what is that um uh, sir uh, i am given a uh, inguinal incisions uh, and uh, i am open the external external oblique and then the i have uh, apl- uh, spermatic cord is uh, picked up and i have applied a soft cl- clamp on the spermatic soft cord clamp. And yes the soft clamp is applied uh, and then the uh, superficial inguinal ring is stre- stretched and i have delivered the testis to to the to the wound and then uh, the testis is open uh, like a book uh, and then uh, i have uh, sent a, a section of tissues for frozen uh, biopsy yeah. uh, and uh, if it is so confirmed negative looking. we okay. again go if you have strong yes, suspicion no. for malignancy you can straight away proceed for high inguinal lymphadenectomy ियलिटरी and delivering the test is has to be perfect you cannot breach the coating somet bar sir i cannot breach the scrotal vaginal tunica vaginal somet bar ko anta hobe bujhte parecho somet bar ko anta hobe ta noy to problem hobe tomake eta mathay rakhte hobe kemon tale tu deliver korle test is tar pore ki korbe soft clamp diye chu inguinally tar mane tumi you can always use a seva shoes maneuver anyway you have applied a clamp in the in this palmatic cord you have delivered, delivered the testis it is not easy you may have to extend the incision a little bit be gentle you have delivered the testis now what will you do uh, sir if uh, frozen section come positive section, this is the time to do a frozen section frozen so section. you can do a frozen section as makhonda has pointed out so frozen section may be needed in you know complex cases a patient with a single surviving testis and things diagnostic like that. a lot of other things diagnostic dilemmas and things like that so now what will you do where will you take down the cord so the question is this uh, sir uh, at the as high as in the inguinal canal or 2 cm distal to the deep inguinal ring theek hai one it, at the deep inguinal ring is good enough if you go a little beyond that is also not bad বাট যত বিয়ন্ডে যাবে তত তোমার সমস্যা বাড়বে আচ্ছা এই পরে তুমি তুমি এটাকে কিভাবে ম্যানেজ করবে দ্য টেস্টিকুলার ভেসেলস স্পারমাটিক কর্ড এগুলো কিভাবে ম্যানেজ করবে হাউ উইল ইউ ম্যানেজ দ্যাট স্যার ওয়ান্স দ্য ডায়াগনোসিস ইজ কনফার্ম আই উইল অ্যাপ্লাই আ হার্ট ক্র্যাশিং ক্ল্যাম্প এন্ড দেন দ্য টেস্টিস ইজ রিমুভড টেস্টিস অ্যালং উইথ দ্য স্পারমাটিক কর্ড এন্ড দ্য রিমেইনিং পোরশন অফ দ্য কর্ড উইল আই উইল টাই আচ্ছা তুমি আমাকে একটা কথা বলো তুমি হোয়েন ইউ আর ডেলিভারিং দ্য টেস্ট ইজ স্পারমেটিক কর্ড ইজ হার্ড ইন কন্টিনিউটি উইথ দ্য টেস্ট ইজ সো দিস ইজ লাইকলি টু বি ইনভলভমেন্ট অফ দ্য স্পারমেটিক কর্ড ইজেন্ট ইট ইয়েস হ্যাঁ এন্ড সো দ্যাট উইল পুট ইট অ্যাজ এ টি সি ওয়ান্স ইট ইজ প্যাথোলজিক্যালি কনফার্ম নাও ইউ हैव গট এ ডিসকন্টিনিউয়াস হার্ডেনিং ইন দি স্পারমেটিক কর্ড আমার কথাটা বোঝাতে পেরেছি پیشنটের টেস্টিকুলার টিউমার আছে স্পারমেটিক কর্ডটা at the beginning of the uh, spermatic cord near the testis is soft however middle of the inguinal canal there it is hard okay eta eta ki situation tumi jano eta hoy eta ke bole discontinuous involvement eta eta kintu eta ki staging e pore tumi jano eta m stage eta m stage e pore this is metastatic discontinuous spermatic cord involvement is considered metastatic তোমার একটু সুবিধা হতে পারে সো তুমি এটা করলে ওটা টিউমারটা বার করলে দিয়ে তারপরে তার হিস্টোপ্যাথোলজি হবে এরপরেতে তুমি আমাকে বলো 
হিস্টোপ্যাথোলজি যখন করলে হিস্টোপ্যাথোলজিতে কি কি আসতে পারে পিওর সেমিনোমা আসতে পারে আর তারপরে তো নানা রকমের টেরাটোমা এমব্রান কার্সেনোমা নানা রকম জিনিস আসতে পারে এরপরে নেক্সট ম্যানেজমেন্টের লাইন কি হবে এইবারে একটু থামতে হবে এইখানে আবার একটা প্রাইমারি এরার তুমি করছো সেটা হচ্ছে তুমি প্রি অপারেটিভ যে মার্কার ভ্যালুস সেই মার্কার ভ্যালুতে গুরুত্ব দিচ্ছ বেশি মার্কার ভ্যালুস প্রি অপারেটিভলি গুরুত্ব আছে বাট রিমেম্বার স্টেজিং ইজ ডান উইথ পোস্ট অপারেটিভ বায়োমার্কার্স পোস্ট অপারেটিভ বায়োমার্কার্স অলওয়েজ রিমেম্বার পোস্ট অপারেটিভ বায়োমার্কার্স বিকজ প্রি অপারেটিভ বায়োমার্কার্স মে বি রেজ বাট পোস্ট অপারেটিভ বায়োমার্কার্স আর মোর ইম্পর্টেন্ট সো নাও কামস দি কোয়েশ্চেন আলফা ফিটোপ্রোটিনের হাফ লাইফ কত ঠিক আছে তাহলে এইটা দ্যাট শোজ আস হোয়েন উই ক্যান রিপিট দিস টেস্ট তার মানে তুমি অর্কিটেকটমি করে তারপরে তাহলে একটু গ্যাপ দাও তারপরে কেননা প্রি অপারেটিভ মার্কার মে বি হাই তারপরে তুমি আবার এটা করবে করে তারপরে তুমি প্রসিড করবে তাহলে তোমার স্টেজিংটা এইবারে কমপ্লিট হলো এইবারে তোমার স্টেজ ওয়ান ডিজিজ তার মানে তুমি প্রি অপো নর্মাল পেয়েছিলে পোস্ট অপো নর্মাল পেয়েছো এরপরে তোমার স্টেজ ওয়ান ডিজিজ কি করবে স্যার যেটা জিজ্ঞেস করছেন তাহলে একটা অপশন তুমি বলেছো সার্ভিলেন্স রেডিয়েশনটা এখন আর চলে না বাবা তাহলে চেঞ্জ তাহলে কি হচ্ছে তুমি ইউ ক্যান গিভ কার্বো প্ল্যাটিন সিঙ্গেল ডোজ কার্বো প্ল্যাটিন একটা কার্বো প্ল্যাটিন কিন্তু এর পজিটিভ নেগেটিভ পয়েন্ট আছে রেডিয়েশন ইজ নট ফেভার্ড এনি মোর হোয়াই ইজ নট রেডিয়েশন ফেভার্ড এবারে উত্তর দাও স্যার ইট ক্যান কজ দ্য সেকেন্ডারি ম্যালিগন্যান্সিস বাহ ভেরি গুড পড়াশোনা করে এসেছো সো বেসিক্যালি দ্যাট ক্যান কজ সেকেন্ডারি ম্যালিগন্যান্সিস ফিয়ার বিকজ দিস پیشنটস উইল লিভ এক্সেলেন্ট প্রগনোসিস সো লং টার্ম চান্সেস অফ সেকেন্ডারি ম্যালিগন্যান্সিস এই জন্য তুমি রেডিয়েশনটা এখন আর অতটা ফেভার্ড না যতটা আগে ছিল তাহলে স্টেজ ওয়ান ডিজিজ তোমার হয়ে গেল ভেরি গুড তাহলে সার্ভিলেন্স করলে অথবা তুমি দেখো যদি হাই রিস্ক কেস হয় তাহলে তুমি সেক্ষেত্রে তুমি কার্বোপ্লাটিন দিতে পারো আচ্ছা এবারে স্টেজ স্যার যেটা বলছেন তুমি স্টেজ ওয়াইজ বলে যাও এবারে যে স্টেজ টু স্টেজ টু মানে হচ্ছে লিম নোড মেটাস্টেসিস লোকালি অ্যাডভান্স ডিজিজ এইটা যে স্টেজ বল স্যার ইন দিস কেস স্যার লিম নোড নেই লিম নোড নেই সরি স্টেজ টু স্যার স্টেজ টু স্যার স্টেজ টু টু ডিজিজ হ্যাঁ ইন দিস কেস স্যার উই হ্যাভ টু দা স্যার টক্সিসিটি তাহলে কি হয় তুমি একটা پیشنট না না একটা پیشنট কে ব্লিওমাইসিন দিয়েছো বিপি তা তুমি বিপি রেজিম সেমিনোমেটাসেও দেবে নন সেমিনোমেটাসেও দেবে সেমিনোমেটাসে না রেট্রোপেটোনাল লিমডো ডিসেকশনের খুব একটা রোল নেই নন সেমিনোমেটাসে देयर इज अ চান্স তুমি জানো এর অ্যানেস্থেশিয়াতে কি করতে হয় ফর রেট্রোপেটোনাল তারপরে <laughs> তারপরে এরপরে তো গ্র্যাজুয়ালি মেটাস্টেটিক ডিজিজ আসবে সেক্ষেত্রে আমাদের যেটা হবে যে রেট্রোপেরিটোনিয়াল যে লিম নোড মাস পড়ে থাকে মানে ফলোইং কেমোথেরাপি সেটার ম্যানেজমেন্ট সেটা তুমি কি স্যার ফলোইং কেমোথেরাপি স্যার আই উইল 
if the related particular limited mass there is no limited mass or there is less than 3 cm mass i will do for closed surveillance yeah. if uh, there is greater than 3 cm mass i will do for the pet ct scan and if tumi, it tumi uh, khub bhalo bolcho uh, uh, ektu ektu tomake thamabo er shonge tumor marker gulo korte hobe दिखे जाबना अच्छा देखे बुझे बोलो परीक्षा लेखा तो प्रोसिडियर मैसिडियो How do you uh, reach the RPA retrovenous node? If you uh, go into the abdomen, uh, you have everything in front of you. How will you reach? What is the maneuver? That is split and roll therapy. अरे वही था तो तुम ही जेटा पढ़े चो split and roll therapy. That is what the is process that? of removing lymph nodes. <laughs> yes. Sir. What do you have to do to reach the retrovenous? Retrovenous पहुँचो ना कहाँ जाके क्यों है वो जेटा पढ़ो? Yes. ताले तुम ही जेटा पढ़ो. Yes. Sir. You have colon on both sides. Yes, sir. I have to mobilize. Yes. So you will size in the line of told on either side. Yes, sir. Wide line of told. Yes. Uh, I have incised and then I will go to the uh, yeah. peritoneal reflection. Uh, yeah. That, that is the that is the maneuver to reach the retrovenous. Yes. Okay. 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 Okay.
Uh, so above uh, there will be the renal vessels. Very good. And the below there will be the bifurcation of the common ilia cataracts. Very good. And the sir, uh, uh, in the midline there will be outer. No, no, midline will be the lateral. Pre-aortic. 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 You will not have to ask me. I am not going to ask you. You will have to ask me. Lateral boundary. And the lateral sir, I will go up to the um, ureter. Ureter. Very good. Bilateral ureter. अच्छा ये बारे तुम ही लिमिनोट बार कोच्चो बार कोर बार टेक्निक था कि तुम ही जेटा बोल ले क्वाइट करेक्ट है जेटा वो चे तुम्हाँ के स्प्लिट एंड रोल तुम ही छोभी देखे जो क्या बोले छोभी दबा जे स्प्लिट एंड रोल टेक्निक ये वावे कोट था प्रियावटिक पैरावटिक रेट्रोवटिक एक है ना आमदे कौन भेसल गुलो बिना क्या बार पिछों दिखे इन लंबर वेन गुलो लंबर लंबर वेन एराई तुम्हार बीपो देर कारों एराई तुम्हार बीपो तो कर बे सो यू हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ दी लंबर वेसल्स कमिंग आउट ऑफ दी एवोटा एस वेल एस दी लंबर वेन्स सो यू हैव टू आई जस्ट प्लीट आई मैनेज दी ब्लड वेसल्स एंड देन रोल वही ता ये तो कीमोथेरेपी पर पौड़े तो कोर्च चुके सिर्फ आखिर तो ताई ना यस सर एस पर योर प्लान आरपी लेंड इट कैन कॉस्ट द रेट्रोपेरिटोनियल फाइब्रोसिस एंड देन इट विल बी डिफिकल्ट बोस कीमोथेरेपी रेट्रोपेरिटोनियल डिसेक्शन इज वन हेल ऑफ ए जॉब तो हमने ये तो प्रोचोंडो डिफिकल्ट एक तो एक बार तो तुम्हें मां कहते हैं कथा बोलो आज के जुग के रोबोटिक्स ऐसे क्या चे आज के जुग के लैपरोस्कोपी एडवांस लैपरोस्कोपी ऐसे क्या चे आरपीएलएनडी ते रोबोटिक्स बा तो रोल ऑफ रोबोटिक्स एंड लैपरोस्कोपिक सर्जरी इन आरपीएलएनडी ऐसे समुद्र की चुबलो तुम्हें सुन ले आश्चर्य जो हवे द because they give rise to bizarre metastasis. Bizarre metastasis. So, we have to see the guideline. This is not recommended because of these bizarre occurrences of metastasis elsewhere. Come on. Say, you need to recommend it. You can do it. You can do it. You can improve it. But current knowledge does not talk. It says if you have to do it, you do it by open procedure. एकाने किंतु रोबोटिक सर्जरी बा लैपरोस्कोपिक सर्जरी आर इनफीरियर टू द रिजल्ट्स ऑफ ओपन सर्जरी हम अमोना है आज तो हमारा ओनेक धोरे यस 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 हाँ जस्ट हम वी हैव ए ऑपरेटिव स्टेप्स ऑपरेटिव कार्ड ऑफ हाई इम्यूनल लैपरोस्कोपी फॉर द सो यू स्टार्ट स्टेप्स हाउ डू यू प्रोसीड डिस्क्राइब द Sir, I have uh, give, give a inguinal incision. Uh, make an Before that, incision. you need make anesthesia. Inguinal, inguinal. You need inguinal. anesthesia. You yes. need anesthesia and position of anesthesia the patient. And, the, uh, and anesthetic scraping and draping. And uh, after what that, anesthesia? I What anesthesia? Sir, so I'll give the spinal anesthesia. Yes, regional anesthesia. Fine. Patient is supine. Yes, sir. And it's patient draping is supine position. So I'm giving the, the spinal <laughs> anesthesia. <laughs> What is the what is his incision? Is like a hernia incision or incision should be uh, different? So it's like a hernia. You have to maneuver the whole testis from scrotum to the inguinal. A hernia incision will be little less. It's a uh, long so inguinal incision. It is extending. Yes, it's a long inguinal incision to the root of the scrotum. Long. So an oblique incision, long oblique in, inguinal incision. Tap on. So then, then I will uh, uh, cut the skin, uh, uh, subcutaneous tissues, uh, that the facelifts come, uh, camper and facelifts scarpa, and then I cut the external oil plate. And after that, uh, I will give an incision to the cremasteric muscle, cord is picked up, and uh, then the... Uh, yeah, why do you need a cremasteric incision? Cremasteric is covering of the cord. Why need to incise the cremaster? Uh, so not necessary, oh. sir. You have to apply the clamp. When you yes, clamp yes. and excise, then you have to uh, dissect uh, structures. But initially, yes. like hernia, you need not 
inside the trimester to yes. তুমি তো একটু আগে আমাদের বলেছো সো ইউ আফটার এক্সপোজিং দা কোড ইউ अप्लाई এ ক্ল্যাম্প এট দা ডিপ ইয়া আচ্ছা আই अप्लाई অফ ক্ল্যাম্প হোয়াই দিস কোড ক্ল্যাম্প ইজ अप्लाई হোয়াই দি কোড ক্ল্যাম্প ইজ अप्लाई সো দা अदरवाइज देयर विल बी দা ियाल क्लैम Along with the uh, cremester, you need to incise the cremester. You dissect the vase yes. and then uh, uh, separate the, the vessels, vessels and keep on clamping and divide. Okay, so yes, once you divide, that whole thing is out. And then how do you do the closure? Sir, I will take a non-absorbable casting, uh, non-absorbable uh, sutures. No, no, no. Oh, that the... is all all managed. Now you are going to do closure. First, we have to tell you, are you going to put a drain? Yes, sir. Why? Why did it drain? It didn't <laughs> drain through the scrotum. Well, it drain through the scrotum. The scrotum, so that it can be causes the. Our uh, scrotal violation will be. No. Well, do not. No, there is no need of drain. You assume. Put a put a compression bandage. Yes. You can put a compression bandage. Not sure a. Sure, hemostasis and close in layers. Okay, sir. छात्र पढ़े खुब भाई थैंक यू